Hi guys. Happy hashtag Thrive Thursday. And uh, what I wanted to talk about, and whether you come on the replay or you pop on here live, I always like to hear from you guys with how all these things are resonating, if you've experienced any of these things, and Obviously, there's a my big proponent is that there's a there's always a solution for any problem. So I don't want to just talk about issues. I want to talk about what we can do to improve them. Now, I'm not going against the grain or trying to shake the tree, but what I want to talk about are some things that a lot of companies and a lot of leaders for some reason are shying away from. Hi Roseanne, hi Sheila, Barrett, Andy, good to see you guys jumping on. So say hi and where you're coming in from. Uh, throw me some thumbs, some smiley faces, some hearts, just so I know that I'm coming through loud and clear. And again, feel free to tag some teammates and share this video with those that you feel would benefit most from it. So this goes for all of network marketing. And again, I, I don't know why it's not being talked about. And, and I get it. In network marketing, you know, you, you have to put on a happy face. And behind closed doors, some people are really miserable in their business and they're not succeeding the way they want to. But what I can tell you is this. The more open and honest people are and companies are, the more that things can be improved. Putting band-aids over things or pretending that certain things don't exist, ignoring things, that's just going to make things get worse. And I feel that there's, there's some band-aids that are being put over some issues that really need to be spoken about. So I wanted to quickly jump on here and go over three different things that I feel need to be talked about. So the number one issue that I see going on right now in network marketing is there is too much overselling and not enough, and in my opinion, under connecting. So there's too much selling and not enough connecting, meaning what companies are teaching is to push products, push services. Everyone is selling on social media right now. They're selling on Instagram. They're selling on Instagram story. They're selling on Facebook. They're selling on LinkedIn. And if you are focusing all your time, your energy, and your efforts on selling to your audience, how is that going to build rapport, trust, relationship, with your audience. No one wants to be sold to all the time. I mean, think about that. Think about if someone close to you, a friend, family member, spouse, all you saw them doing was selling, 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 and not taking the time to connect. I use network marketing almost like dating. Think about it. When you were courting or being courted by your spouse or significant other or whoever you're dating right now, or if you're not dating anyone, you'll still be able to relate to this. Think about it. You know, you let someone know you're interested and you go out on a first date. And what do you do? You sit, you talk, you ask each other questions, you find common ground. You find things that you're interested in, things that you both can relate to right? You open yourself up. You're not trying to seal the deal on the very first date. You're trying to build that trust and that connection to see if it is a good fit. And if it's not, you move in your separate directions. But if it is, you go out on a second date and a third date. And before you know it, you're in a long-term committed relationship, just like network marketing. When you are looking to build a solidified business, you don't want to try to get that person in bed with you the first day. 
You want to get to know them. You want to talk to them. You want to ask them questions. Find out how they can be improving their life physically or financially. And Roseanne says, people stopped following me when I was overselling. And it's the truth. If you oversell and underconnect, you will push people away instead of bringing them closer to you. Treat network marketing like a first date. You have to feel those people out. So if that makes sense, type Y or yes in the chat box. And again, if you're just coming on or this is resonating, give me some thumbs, some smiley faces, some hearts, tag some teammates, share this live because these are things that companies aren't talking that they want you to sell. Even, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you these companies are like, man, all of our associates, all they're doing is just selling and they're not doing the most important foundational piece, which is connecting with other people. You know, they're going right for the jugular instead of taking the time and really focusing on getting to know that person. So always think about the end user in mind. How would you feel? How would you feel personally if every time you jumped on social media, all you were being done to yourself, all, all, all that was being done to you is you were being sold to. Check out this product, join right now. This new shake just came in. We got Black Friday, this. You're just selling. Social media is for connecting and building rapport and trust and relationship. So the number one thing that's not being discussed is there's way too much overselling and way, way too little connecting. Overselling and underconnecting. Number two, another big problem that is not being talked about, but there are some companies that are losing money, that their income is not going up as a whole the way that it was before, or it's flatlined, is because number two, there is very low retention with consumers. People are, being, are becoming more and more impatient now more than ever. People are saying yes, and they are getting out before they even start. People are sending their stuff back after a week. People are trying it for 30 days and sending it back. People stop ordering things that they need. It becomes an expense to those people. So there is very, very high turnover right now, very low retention. People are struggling keeping their customers. And this is because of two things. Number one, people will do what people normally do, which is mean they will, they will try something, and if they don't like it, they will stop it. But the second and most important piece to that is that people aren't bringing newer people in quick enough to replace the people that are falling behind. So there is very low retention with consumers. And again, number one, it's because people are more non-committal than ever. They're just trying things. But number two, and most impactful, is that people aren't enrolling new people quick enough to replace the people that are falling off each and every day. So if that makes sense, type Y or yes in the chat box. And again, if this is resonating, hearts, thumbs, wow faces, tag some teammates as Roseanne did, thank you so much, and share this. So again, the three issues that companies and leaders are not talking about, number one, that there's too much overselling and there's too little connecting. Overselling and underconnecting. People are going for the jugular. They're trying to get people in bed with them. Remember, treat network marketing like a first date. Get to know someone. You're not trying to sleep with them the first time. You want to build that trust, that rapport, and that relationship with that person. And number two, very low retention with consumers. Now, number three, and no company, no leader is ever going to say what I'm about to say right now, but it's the honest to God truth, and I'm going to tell you what's going on. Number three, there are too many options. Every single day, 
you see new companies starting up. You see a new shake company, a new CBD company, a new HGH hormone replacement company, a skin company, this company, an oil company. There are so many opportunities out there right now. Think about this. Think about when you said yes to your opportunity X amount of years ago. How many companies have opened up since? So there's a two-parter to this. The first part is this. People that aren't making money in their opportunity are going to new companies, going to them if they're a ground floor or one of a kind. I don't care how ground floor a company is or how ground floor the opportunity is or how high up on the tree that you get into that company with, you're still taking yourself to that next company. So whatever issues or problems that you were having in your first business, your second business, your third business, if those issues weren't addressed, you're still taking yourself to that next opportunity. But number two is this. What I see companies doing is they're doing something called cornering the marketplace. And for people that don't know what cornering the marketplace means is if they see their associates. So if a company focuses on wellness products where they focus you know, on shakes and they focus on this and, and bars and, and supplements and they see their company, they see people within their company buying and supporting products from other people and other companies. So I'm just going to use an example, and this is just, a, just, just an example. If somebody was with a shake company like Herbalife or Shakeology or Isogenics, right, and they were doing wellness products, but there was someone that really was interested in essential oils. So they would maybe reach out to a friend in Young Living or doTERRA, so they would start ordering products from them. And what happens is these companies pay attention to what their consumers are doing. So what do they do? They corner the marketplace, they create that product within their organization, cutting off the relationship between that person and the one that they were supporting so they can increase the company's income by producing another product. Then you see them do it again, where a wellness company is now going into the CBD industry, where a CBD company just focuses on CBD. So my point is this, don't get blinded by all of the options that are out there. Your company is going to do what's best for the company to corner the marketplace, to tap into the existing consumers they have to increase the company's income. But in a way, it's spun where now you have all these other options where not only can you talk to people about wellness products, but you can talk to them about CBD. You can talk to them about bone broth and kit shakes and, and oils and this and that. And, and it becomes so overwhelming that you get so consumed with products that you forget that there's a business here and you almost start to lose yourself in how are you going to talk to people? Because from what you started building your company with, if it was strictly on wellness, now you're like, man, now there's CBD I can talk about and bone broth and oils and HGH and all these things. You start losing yourself because it starts to take you away from the purpose and the passion of what was inspiring you in the very beginning. So here's my simple message in what you can do for that. It doesn't matter what your company is going to do because every network marketing company, no matter how young or how old they are, they are going to look to corner the marketplace. They are going to look to make their opportunity more appealing to other people that are using products outside. So don't be surprised if your company continues to expand the library of what products they provide. That's fine. Support it, love it, honor it, and do what you want with it. But here's my simple message. Stay true to why you said yes to your opportunity. 
What was the reason why you said yes? What products really changed your life? What was it about your opportunity that made it different from everyone else's? Where, so go back to the grassroots, go back to the core foundation, way back in the day when you first said yes, that had you so fired up, there was nothing that can knock you off course. Because right now people are overwhelmed and they're consuming too much information and it's taking them away from their focus. So you wanna support, you wanna honor, and you wanna love what your company is doing as far as expanding their products. But that doesn't mean that's something else that you need to talk about. If it's not in alignment, you stick what, what is in alignment with you. You focus on why you said yes and the solution that helped you that you know could help other people physically, financially, or both. And again, the companies aren't gonna talk about this, but leaders start to have to. This is a business, guys. This is not a hobby. It may be a side hustle, but this could be your plan B that one day becomes your plan A. And what I'm telling you right now is the more that you start to take action, the more that you take responsibility for your business and not wait for your upline, not wait for your downline, no more waiting. You take full 100% responsibility for you and your business, the greater success you are going to have because waiting does nothing but keep you standing still. And you're not a tree, just move. So remember, there is way too much overselling and there's under connecting. Connect more, sell less. Number two, there is very low retention with consumers. Number one, people are not as patient as they once were. They're trying something and they're in and out the door. And number two, you're not enrolling enough people for the business to keep your business rolling forward and you're not having enough consumers come in to replace the ones that are going to fall off. And finally, number three, there are too many options. There's too many options out there. People are being prospected by everyone to join this, join that, and I'll tell you right now, to finish this off, and Jay said, I understand the message, Scott, great realignment talk, I appreciate this in you, I appreciate you too, brother. Thank you, Roseanne. So I'll, I'll finish with this. If you ever hear anyone say to you, I have a one-of-a-kind opportunity, I have a one-of-a-kind opportunity that has a standalone product, and this is a ground floor opportunity. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for when people tell you my compensation plan is better than yours. Every compensation plan is good. You know why? Because in every company, someone is always making money. And that means the compensation plans work. Products, all the products are great. Don't tell people your products are better than everybody else's. There's a reason why there are people saying yes to multiple opportunities in multiple companies every day because those products work for certain people. Maybe not you, maybe not somebody else, but someone. So don't tell people that your products are better, your compensation plan is better, one of a kind opportunity. You always wanna support the profession. You always wanna support the industry. You always wanna to talk to people at eye level, leading with your heart and not with your head. And the sooner that you get out of your head and you get into your heart, the better of a business you're going to have. So guys, I hope you found this information helpful. Again, please tag some teammates, share this video with those that you feel need it most. And again, I'm gonna say this to you guys. If you have individuals in your business right now that are frustrating you. You are pouring into them all the time. They are dabbling. They are not as serious as you. They are just not doing what is required to achieve what they're looking to achieve. What I can tell you is this, is let those people go. You're looking for people that are gonna build this business with or without you. So guys, much love and gratitude to each and every one of you. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye, everybody.